Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for the nuclear war, World War Three nuclear strike news cycle. While many of us have been distracted by domestic issues over the past week or so, the war in Eastern Europe actually has been getting worse. Just the other night, we heard that Russia launched several attacks across the country, and now it's being reported that Russia has hit the western city of Lviv in Ukraine, getting dangerously close to NATO countries. Now, it's not the first time there's been a strike in this area, but it seems to be escalating. And now we're hearing from the president of Ukraine, this important message, he says he is warning the world to prepare for Putin to unleash a nuclear attack. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, buddy. I don't want to dis dismiss it outright. There actually is a real concern that Vladimir Putin will launch a nuclear weapon of some sort for some reason. Perhaps it'll be a small tactical device, not a large ICBM or intercontinental ballistic missile. But the possibility is there because Russia seems to be operating under the premise there's an existential threat to their country, and that is a prerequisite for them firing a nuke, at least in Ukraine, perhaps in Eastern Europe. We're learning that two Nordic states might actually join NATO, with Russia warning them not to do so. Certainly that could make Vladimir Putin feel like Russia is facing an existential threat. No. But we're also concerned about the sinking of the Russian flagship, the Moskva, that was reportedly sunk by Ukrainian forces. Now, Russia initially said it was just a fire that sank their vessel. Perhaps they were embarrassed because they're fighting a ground war and their flagship sank. But a TV presenter in, on, on Russian state TV said World War Three has effectively begun because Russia is not at war with Ukrainian infrastructure. Russia's at war against NATO infrastructure. The only real difference between whether it's a NATO versus Russia war and Ukraine versus Russia is the personnel. The reality is the West has continually increased the supplies being sent into Ukraine. Do you think Russia views this as Russia versus Ukraine? They don't. Since the start of things, Russia views this as a proxy state for the West. That's well, that's one of the reasons, if not the reason, Russia actually invaded. In 2014, the Russian president was ousted. Russia per perceives this as an act by the West to oust the sitting president and basically take the country over with soft power. Believe whatever you want to believe. There's a lot of fog of war and propaganda out there. Western media just says Putin is evil and he's bombing civilians. And, you know, he is doing a lot of bad things. I mean, he started this war because he was losing the battle of soft power. But I think Russia's fear is that if Ukraine falls to the West, i.e. joining NATO or the EU, then we've controlled the entirety of their borders. We've shut down their access to the Black Sea, and that will cripple the Russian economy. Is that not an existential threat? Now, I'm not going to take Zelensky's word for it. OK, look, as much as I can respect that he is concerned about his country, I think Ukraine is a beautiful country and I'm it's sickening to see what's happening. Zelensky has made desperate pleas before and he's and he's going to ratchet things up to 11 to convince you to send in the troops. But now the pope is also warning about nuclear war or World War Three. And it's like, OK, come on, come on. Really, guys, can we calm down? Everybody seems to think World War Three is going to happen. And I've heard it a million times, so I'm not entirely convinced. But. We do have Democrats calling for U.S. troops to go on the ground in Ukraine, which is the most psychotic thing I have ever heard. Are you nuts? That's basically like we should declare war with Russia and launch the nukes immediately. Yeah, send U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine and see how long it takes Russia to be like, fire the missiles. Because they're not going to wait around if U.S. troops enter the fray. That being said, What's the difference? There are American veterans on the ground. There are British veterans on the ground. The international coalition, just because it's some kind of letter of mark, Russia is supposed to act like the weapons and personnel aren't coming from NATO. So perhaps, perhaps it is World War Three. And you know why I'm more uh, um, willing to say World War Three in this regard as opposed to like the Cold War or proxy wars? Because this is a war in Europe. And it's with Russia's direct involvement. I wish I could say that it looks like things would calm down, but it actually looks like things are actually going to escalate, which has me worried. I don't know if we're going to see nuclear war again. We've been distracted by things like Elon Musk and Alex Jones and all these other stories.
But maybe we are inching towards that moment. Or maybe not. Maybe Zelensky is just trying to fan the flames of, of rhetoric, as it were, to convince the West to intervene. Otherwise, Ukraine is done. Russia will come in. They'll take control. But let's read what's happening. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member if you would like to support the work we do here. If you like these videos and you like our journalism, we have many reporters writing stories every single day. We have Ilad Eliyahu right here on the ground reporting from protests and other political moments, political events. That is only possible because you guys sign up as members. That's the reality. We want news and information to be free. We got to go and get it and bring it to you. If we put it all behind a paywall, a lot of people who should see it won't. So we set it up. It's free information. It's supported by you as members. We're not a nonprofit, but that's how it works. As a member, you get access to our exclusive TimCast IRL members only shows, as well as many of our other members only shows like The Green Room, Tales from the Inverted World, New Conspiracy Shows Coming, and Pop Culture Crisis. We're working on a lot more members only content. But if you like these videos and you think this news is important and people need to see it, we need your support as members, if you can do it. But don't forget to like this video right now, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and share this video far and wide. I used to say that uh, with all of your support, sharing this video will be bigger than CNN. Well, now I can say CNN Plus launched, we're at least bigger than that. I really do appreciate it. Let's read the story from the New York Post. Zelensky warns the world to prepare for Putin to unleash a nuclear attack. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky warned the world should prepare and urged that air raid shelters and anti-radiation medicine be readied for the potential calamity. Now, I've already heard reports that potassium iodide is in short supply. Of course, I've uh, let me just tell you, friends, I've had potassium iodide in our storeroom for like five years. I'll tell you how it works. This is basically what they give you when radiation is running amok because iodine, you ingest it. Then your body takes the iodine and puts it in your thyroid. If it's radioactive iodine, then it's going to damage your thyroid. If you take potassium iodide, your body gets its fill of iodine. And when the radioactive stuff comes in, it goes, no, no, no need. We have our fill. I guess theoretically, there are other ways you can do it. I'm not a doctor, so don't take my word for it. Talk to a doctor about how to appropriately, appropriately do it because I don't know what the right you know, dosage or anything is. But there's also iodine in like table salt or whatever. That's really what it's for. But if you're if we're talking about like massively radioactive objects with like gamma wave radiation coming off, yo, steer clear. Those are the fears. In an interview with CNN that aired Sunday, Zelensky was asked whether Putin would deploy chemical or tactical nuclear weapons. Quote, not only me, all of the world, all of the countries have to be worried because it can be not real information, but it can be truth. Chemical weapons, they should do it. They could do it for them. The life of people, nothing. That's why, Zelensky said, we should think, not be afraid, not be afraid, but be ready. But that is not a question for Ukraine, not only for Ukraine, but for all the world, I think. Now, look, far be it from me to sit here and be like the guy who's losing a war is saying the world should be panicking. You know, far be it from me to call him a liar. But I do think it's fair to say, take it with a grain of salt. In an interview with Ukrainian media Saturday night, Zelensky warned of the real possibility of nuclear attack. We shouldn't wait for the moment when Russia decides to use nuclear weapons. We must prepare for that. I got to be honest, he's right. He, he's right, right there. It's not so much to say Russia will do it, but they could. And if they do, are we going to be sitting here with our, with our hands under our butts? Or are we going to be like, we are prepared in the event that there is a tactical nuclear strike? Tactical nuclear strike. I think that's infinitely more possible. I believe that Vladimir Putin could and would use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. But please stop. I'm not talking about multiple independently retargeting, or I'm sorry, multiple independently targeting reentry vehicles or MIRVs, ICBMs that fly up into the stratosphere and then drop 10 to 12 warheads. I'm talking about nuclear artillery. I'm talking about much smaller yield weapons, 100 kiloton bombs. That stuff has a real potential. The idea that Putin is going to launch a nuke and blow up New York. No, no, no. I think for the most part, for the time being, we are fine. I think in Eastern Europe, they should be prepared. He goes on to mention the anti-radiation medicine and things of that nature. But it's not just the president of Ukraine. It's also the Pope. The Wall Street Journal reports Pope Francis prays for peace in Ukraine and warns of nuclear war. 
warning of nuclear war like it might happen or warning of the dangers of nuclear war. Please, the context here is really important. I think everybody's screaming at the top of their lungs. I think you'd be stupid not to be prepared for the worst case scenario. I really don't think there's going to be a World War III nuclear war unless, of course, it may have already started, I guess. Take a look at this. Russian state TV claims Ukraine invasion has already escalated into World War Three. I got to be honest, um, this they have a point. You don't got to like Russia to point out how they feel may may encourage nuclear weapons. A Russian state TV host claimed the reason Vladimir Putin's special operation in Ukraine is taking so long is because the nation has entered World War Three. Presenter Olga Skabayeva implored Russia One viewers to recognize the country is now fighting against NATO. One can safely call what has escalated into World War Three. That's absolutely for sure. Right now, we're definitely fighting against NATO infrastructure, if not NATO itself. We need to recognize that. Not wrong. Not wrong. What do you think Russia does? I mentioned this in previous videos as it pertains to war in, in Eastern Europe. Do you think Russia is sitting there going like, their Russian, uh, their, their NATO tanks, their NATO missiles, their NATO guns, their citizens of Western countries like the U.S. and and Nor and and the Baltic states. But it's not them fighting us. Nah, look, the only thing, the only difference between this and any other standard war between great powers, NATO ain't declared anything yet, but our people sure are there, armed with our weapons, and we are supplying more weapons. Heavy weapons. Take a look at this from the Financial Times. NATO states agree to supply heavy weapons to Ukraine. This story from April 8th. Russia admits significant losses of troops as Donbass region prepares for fresh offensive. Do you think Vladimir Putin and Russia will be like, we lost in Ukraine? Bye. I don't think so. I really do not think so. And NATO is supplying heavy weapons, advanced weaponry to Ukraine. If Russia loses and the Moskva was sunk, a Russian flagship in the, in the, I believe in the Black Sea, if Russia is actually forced to retreat, you think they'll just be like, oh, shucks. Or do you think Vladimir Putin will be like, I will not back down. Fire. Here's what scares me. I believe that if Russia fired something like a 100 kiloton bomb on Kiev, the war would be over. He won. NATO would not retaliate. Now, the sanctions would be bad, but that would be the end of it. Russia would win. Nobody would want to escalate beyond that for fear of Russia actually firing intercontinental ballistic missiles at their own capitals. So how do you stop Russia when Russia is targeting a country that is not part of any alliance, not part of the EU or NATO? You let him win. That's the scary reality. I genuinely think Putin could strike Kiev. Western uh, individuals who volunteer in, in, in Ukraine would probably scatter. There would be there, there would be deserters across the Ukrainian uh, military. Not all of them, but many people would be like, they're nuking us. What chance do we have? You know, Kiev would be obliterated. Civilians, 100,000 would be dead. But Putin would be like, it's done. Now, this is for the civilian reason is why I don't think Putin would actually hit Ukraine. Because many Russians view Ukrainians as, you know, similar. The languages are similar. In fact, my friends, uh, the, the friend, I, I don't want to give away too much information about the people I know in Ukraine. But people I know in Ukraine, they speak several languages. Some, just a couple, some, many. I'll leave it at that. There's a lot of danger right now to uh, uh, like giving away too much information about what's happening with people in Ukraine. Obviously, there's a war going on. But um, I don't think Russia wants to kill civilians. I think Russia is willing to kill civilians in the pursuit of, de of destabilizing the existing government. Vladimir Putin does not view Zelensky favorably. And we saw this in 24, uh, 20, 2014 when the sitting president was ousted. Russia views it as a U.S. CIA backed coup. Call it what you want. War is war. Of course, Russia has their reasons. NATO member states have agreed to supply new types of advanced weaponry to Ukraine, alliance reps said, as Kiev prepares for an offensive 
by Russia in the country's east. The pledge came after a plea from Ukraine's foreign minister for Western countries to move faster with supplies or risk seeing many people die. This, uh, they say six weeks since Vladimir Putin ordered the invasion, this we understand, that has sparked demands from Kiev for Western countries to supply more heavy weapons, armor, and advanced systems. Ukraine's foreign minister, Dmitro Kuleba, said he would use a NATO meeting in Brussels to ask for aircraft, missiles, armored vehicles, and heavy air defense systems, among others. Let's go back to World War II. Why was it that the Axis powers declared war on the United States? One reason, we were supplying weapons to their enemies. And they said, we need to cut those supply lines, force the U.S. to use those weapons for itself, so we get attacked. Uh, again, many other reasons, but that was a big one. Well, that was a big mistake, because then what did you get? You got American flesh and blood storming the beaches of Normandy in an, uh, and many other beaches in what is viewed as an insane siege in Europe. It's crazy. But we won and we shut them down. Now, if Vladimir Putin is looking at this conflict, the one thing he's probably worried about is U.S. soldiers getting involved. With us supplying weapons, he might view it similarly to how the Axis powers did. They're basically the backing of which we are, we are at war with. And that's what that Russian state TV presenter said. Zelensky appeals for stronger, more destructive sanctions. Says up to 3,000 Ukrainian soldiers are dead. More sanctions? What do you think Putin's thinking about the sanctions? Russia's already called the sanctions total war. The sanctions imposed on Russia have caused a bit of turmoil, but it's also forced Russia to become a bit more resilient, creating their own economic systems, pushing back against the West. Vladimir Putin warned. He said that if you wanted to buy oil from them, it had to be in rubles through Russian bank accounts. Well, when European countries refused, he didn't do anything. So maybe it's a lot of bluster. Maybe. I still genuinely believe that Vladimir Putin will not accept defeat. And that could involve the use of low-grade, low-tier nuclear weapons. The Daily Mail reports just today, first images show Putin's doomed flagship Moskva on fire and sinking into the Black Sea after being shot by Ukraine as conscripts tell of horrors on board with hundreds thought to have died. I can't show you the photos because they're a bit too brutal. I, I apologize. I mean, it's just war stuff, but, you know, YouTube has their limits. There was damage to the hull of the ship. It looks like a missile hit it. Now, the reporting is that a Neptune missile from Ukraine struck the flagship of the Russian Black Sea, Fle uh, Black sea Fleet and sank it. Russia denied it. Where does Ukraine get these weapons? From NATO. If NATO was not involved, Russia would have gone in and shut down Ukraine instantly. NATO, the West overtly are supporting Ukraine. How are we not involved in this war? Now, the question is, does Russia actually have the means to fight a war with NATO? Technically not, but they do have nukes. And that means Russia might be like, I'll call your bluff. You know, I'll look at it this way. Imagine there's a short guy at a bar and, uh, you know, he's got a girl and this big dude walks over and starts hitting on that girl. And then all of a sudden the girl's like, I'm actually going to go hang out with this guy. He's going to be like, dude, what? Like, I'm here. I'm paying for this. So then dude comes up. Grabs the woman. She's like, no, she's with me. Well, all of a sudden, you see, that's the invasion. That's the war. You don't do that. You've aggressed. Big dude says, I can beat you up. But little dude opens up his, you know, shirt jacket and shows a gun. Now we got a question. Big dude could beat up little dude. NATO could crush Russia. Russia's got a gun. Big dude's got guns too. But he's like, oh man, what do we do? Is this going to result in a shootout? Are other people going to get hurt? Is this whole place going to get messed up? There's the challenge. I know, probably a silly analogy, but here we go. Then look at it this way. The chick stomps on the foot of the dude, but she's wearing a boot given to her by the big guy. And the boot hurt dude's foot. I know, maybe we don't actually need the analogies, whatever, you get the point. Well, little dude says, you know what, fine. I'm not going to use my weapons, but I'm going to call in my buddies. The AP reports, Syrian fighters ready to join the fray or as they call it, the next phase of Ukraine war. My friends, in the scenario I have given you, it sounds like a bar brawl is about to break out, right? Well, scale that up. 
Could it potentially be nuclear war? Maybe the bunch of people in the bar are like, dude, dude, stop. We don't want to fight. Just let the big dude take your girl. And the small dude's like, no. He's not going to back down. No way. He's like, I'm tired of being made fun of for being short. And so he refuses to back down. He calls over some of his buddies. They're ready to join him in the fight. Big dude backs away and tells the girl, it's all you, man. And now the girl is boxing with the short dude and his friends. But the big dude's just giving her, you know, like a boot. I don't know. At some point, the big dude's going to have to step in, right? Maybe not. Maybe he says, I didn't care about that chick all that much. Anyway, dude, I was just hitting on her. Well, let's bring it back to reality. Syrian fighters may join the fray. We've already seen some. The AP reports during a visit to Syria in 2017, Vladimir Putin lavished praise on the Syrian general whose division played an instrumental role in defeating insurgents in the country's long-running civil war. Now, members of Brigadier General Suhail al-Hassan's division are among hundreds of Russian-trained Syrian fighters who have reportedly signed up to fight alongside Russian troops in Ukraine, including Syrian soldiers, former rebels, and experienced fighters who fought for years against the Islamic State. So far, only a small number appears to have arrived in Russia for military training ahead of deployment on the front lines. Although Kremlin officials boasted early in the war of more than 16,000 applicants from the Middle East. U.S. officials and activists monitoring Syria say there have not yet been significant numbers of fighters from the region joining the war. Analysts, however, say this could change as Russia prepares for the next phase of battle with a full-scale offensive in eastern Ukraine. They believe fighters from Syria are more likely to be deployed in the coming weeks, especially after Putin named General Alexander Dvornikov, who commanded the Russian military in Syria, Syria, as the new war commander in Ukraine. Well, where do you think this leads to? Does it eventually just get to the point where, I mean, I mean, we're there. Western country civilians go into Ukraine and the country's like, we didn't declare war. They chose to go. What's the difference? You know, I think back to the um, refugee crisis and the immigration crisis in the U.S. and Europe. You have videos of thousands of people marching towards the U.S. border, flying the flag of their country. And what did the right call that? An invasion. They said, we are being invaded. Large swaths of people are coming and they're flying their country's flag. How is it any different? NATO civilians, they may not be flying American flags. They can fly Ukrainian, but they are citizens of these countries. At what point does Russia say, I've got to go after Western resources? What if Vladimir Putin strikes NATO uh, naval forces? Take a look at this. Russia calls increased NATO military activity in the Arctic worrying, warns of unintended incidents. Russia is worried about increased activity of NATO forces in the Arctic and sees unintended incidents occurring in the region. In March, Finland and Sweden, which are both considering joining NATO, conducted combined NATO military drills. The recent increase in NATO's activity in the Arctic is a cause for concern. Another large-scale scale military exercise of the alliance was recently held in, Nor- uh, uh, in northern Norway. We also had Russia fly fighters over Swedish territory, an island, with nuclear weapons, armed with nuclear weapons. Who will strike first? Perhaps it'll be Russia. Perhaps Russia will say, your increased military presence is a threat to us and just hit NATO forces. Maybe that's what NATO wants, justification. I think NATO wants to get involved. We got it from the Democrats. CBS Evening News reports members of President Biden's own party, the Democrat, like Democratic Senator Chris Coons, say it's time for the president to consider sending in U.S. troops to Ukraine to help fight Russia. The president has repeatedly said he won't. Yeah, it's very unpopular. With election coming up, he don't want to lose. Trump will get in. This will all be over. But. What if someone strikes NATO NATO ships? What if we see another Gulf of Tonkin incident? What if Finland says, oh, no, we've been hit. We're sinking. And then U.S. says we have to intervene. Russia has gone too far. We are obligated under, uh, you know, certain treaties. What if he hits NATO forces? What if it's, it's an accident either way? What if there's a false flag? I don't know. We stand on the edge of a very serious conflict. CBS News reports the transcript. Margaret Brennan says in some public remarks this week's this week, you said the country needs to talk about when it might be willing to send troops to Ukraine. You said if the answer is never, then we are inviting another level of escalation and brutality by Putin. Are you arguing that President Biden was wrong when he said he would not send troops to Ukraine? Are you asking him to set a red line? Coons goes on. 
I think those of us in Congress who have a critical role in setting foreign policy and in advising the president in terms of his decision as commander in chief need to look clearly at the level of brutality. This is a moment of enormous challenge for all of us. And I deeply respect Biden's leadership, blah, 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 blah. But this is a critical moment. If Vladimir Putin, who has shown us how brutal he can be, is allowed to just continue to massacre civilians, to commit war crimes throughout Ukraine without NATO, without the West coming more forcefully to his aid, I great, I, I, I great, I deeply worry that what's going to happen next is that we will see Ukraine turn into Syria. The American people cannot turn away from this tragedy in Ukraine. I think the history of the 21st century turns on how fiercely we defend freedom in Ukraine and that Putin will only stop when we stop him. I'll close with this, Margaret. This is a weekend when so many families gather to celebrate the very best in the, uh, in the human spirit and, we were at, and where we grieve the loss of many of those due to COVID. We should also be prayerful and mindful of those who are fighting for freedom in Ukraine and how much their heroism and patriotism inspires the rest of us. Troops on the ground. Yeah, okay. World War Three, then? If that's what you want. I certainly don't. How could it start? How about this? Newsweek says Russian chemical weapons in Ukraine could see NATO troops deployed. UK. The UK's Undersecretary of the Armed Forces, James Heapy, has said that all possible options are on the table in terms of how the West might respond. If accusations that Russia used chemical weapons on Ukraine are confirmed. We heard this with Peter Ducey as well. He asked Joe Biden, you know, he said, you, you alluded to using chemical weapons in, in, in Ukraine against the Russians. He said, if Russia uses chemical weapons, we'll respond in kind. Biden said, that doesn't mean that it means, you know, we're going to respond with, you know, force. And then Ducey's like, what does that mean? I ain't telling you. It could mean NATO troops. But what's the, what's, what's the, what's the likelihood Russia's actually going to use chemical weapons? Well, NATO certainly thinks it's likely or possible. Euro News reported on March 25th, chemical weapons, NATO to provide Ukraine with equipment to counter Russian threat. We've already heard the propaganda. We've heard the statements to Congress. When Marco Rubio said to the Undersecretary of State that, um, you know, if there's a chemical or biological weapon in uh, attack in Ukraine, you have, there's no doubt in your mind that it would be the Russians. Newland said, it would be the Russians. And if that happens, they're going to say, oh, oh, well, now we have to go in. That's our red line. I mean, we've got, we've got U.S. troops in Syria. When did that happen? Right? How long until we just go on the ground in Ukraine? Perhaps soon. We have this story from iNews. Sweden and Finland joining NATO could tip the balance against Russia in a way that creates new problems. Oh, man. Russia warned him not to do it. Sana Marin, Finnish prime minister. I mean, they've expressed very serious uh, a desire to join NATO. And if they do, would Russia retaliate? Would Russia say Europe has fallen to our enemies and we must fight back? I think that's what's already happening. Now, some have said that it's going to be a limited operation. Take a look at this map from the BBC. Areas of Russian military control in Ukraine. We can see Ukrainian counterattacks happening up through the north of Ukraine near Kiev. We have split between Russian military control and Ukrainian counterattacks near Kharkiv. But when you look at the eastern the Donbass region, all the way down to Crimea, Putin is winning. This is one of the latest updates. Take a look at this. The eastern region is under Russian military control. They've created their land bridge to Crimea. Luhansk, Donetsk, Kherson, and Crimea, of course. And Russia is advancing near Mykolaiv. Probably pronouncing that wrong. But what about this story from the AP? Russia hits Lviv, prepares for an assault in eastern Ukraine. This is what we were, 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 we were worried about. Now, I was told by people, all Putin's going to do is going to split the country in half down the, uh, the Dnieper River. I think it's the name of it. That's not what we're seeing. He's hitting the east. Nah. Putin does not want NATO uh, uh, sympathetic government in, in, in Ukraine. For those that aren't familiar, I'll, tell, I'll put it this way. When I was on the ground in Kiev talking with people, the way it was presented to me is that Yanukovych, the previous president, was playing both sides. He was going to the West and be like, what are you going to give me? He was going to Russia. What are you going to give me? And he kept leveraging them against each other. The U.S. was basically like, yo, we don't like that. And there was a lot of Western sympathy in Ukraine, particularly in Western cities like Kiev. And so 
Protesters ousted Yanukovych in support, saying we don't want to have anything to do with Russia. People in the city there told me, we know the horrors of the Soviet Union and what Russia did back in the 1930s. We know how bad it was under the Soviet Union up until the, the, the early 90s. It was bad. And it's still been bad, even though it's been 30 or so years. They didn't want to have anything to do with Russia's new federation, new trade federation. So Yanukovych was ousted. But they kind of felt like he was playing both sides. The new administration that came in, I think it may have been Poroshenko. I'm not sure. I think it was a temporary guy and then Poroshenko. Pro-West. Zelensky pro-West. Now Russia's like, I lost all leverage. There's not even a negotiation anymore. The new guys that are coming in are just pushing us off. No. So Russia won't let go. He's going to secure it all. He's going to crush the current government of Ukraine. I think soft power is like, you know, it could be bad because you get corruption, manipulation, but it's better than war. You want to fight a conflict, do it with influence and resources and wealth. There's, there's, there's problems there, but it's better than people going to war. I don't know. So where this ends, I just can't imagine a scenario where Russia is just happy with it. Where Russia is just like, you know, we lost, but okay, whatever. Russia says mass strikes launched in Ukraine. Yeah, they're hitting the they're hitting the West now. They're hitting the West, East and the West. I'll at least point out this just because, yeah, yeah, yeah World War Three. Here you go. Seven times World War Three has been wrongly declared or predicted. No, this is it, it honestly is a stupid article. I bring it up because I'm like, I recognize the stupidity of being like World War Three. They mentioned a few things. The 16th century Nostradamus followers keep saying it's coming. Yo, I remember back when uh, Israel launched, I think it was Protective Edge. They were People were like, this could be World War Three, man. And the reason was they were like, if they start going in and crushing Palestine right now, a thing so hot, Iran could strike, forcing Russia in. And then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, yeah. Conflict in the Middle East. Is that really going to be the catalyst? Maybe. 1950. Many people thought the Cold War was World War Three, but it never really got to that point. Then we have these ones. 2016, Trump predicts we could have had World War III. Oh, come on, could have. Elon Musk says AI may prompt the conflict, but he says it begins, and he's just talking about a fight over artificial intelligence. Trump suggests Obama's handling of North Korea could have. That's not a prediction or a declaration. Former Ukrainian PM, World War III has already begun. Oh, wait, so it's not just Russia. It's also Ukraine. So Ukraine and Russian influences are saying World War III started? Okay. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't matter. We didn't call World War I World War I. There's a funny joke. I can't remember what show I was watching, but someone traveled back in time to World War I. And then it, it might have been Legends of Tomorrow. No, I don't think it was that. It could have been some DC thing. And then someone's like, uh, they, they said something like, they called it World War I. And then the person went, w- World War I? What do you mean? Like, it implies there are more, because they just called it the Great War back then. History is condensed and written by the victors. So right now, we could be in a conflict of global strife. It could be civil war happening here. We just had a, we had a Black Lives Matter protester point a gun at a guy in his car. Here we go again. As the temperature warms up, things light up. Maybe he'll stay calm, but with these elections coming up, man, I think we're just in a lull period. Wait till November and, and see how when Republicans sweep, see how bad it gets 2023 to 2024. Or maybe it won't. I don't know. We could be sitting in World War Three. It could be said in 50 years, World War Three began with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we won't know until it escalates. So do right by your family and take care of yourselves. Figure out what you need to do. I don't have all the answers for you. I can only show you the news as it comes. I can't see the future. Hindsight is 2020. For the time being, this is the information we have, and maybe it's nothing. Maybe we're just incorrectly predicting World War III. Putin backs off, cries, and goes to bed. Maybe it's something worse. I don't know. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.